In 2010, Daniel Fraga began criticising and taunting Brazilian politicians on his YouTube channel, eventually resulting in some very serious legal problems that he bizarrely refused to accept. Then in 2017, when he realised he could no longer ignore the law, he vanished without a trace, apparently taking an estimated minimum of $100 million in Bitcoin with him. So what happened to him? Let's investigate. If you enjoy internet mysteries and generally disturbing content, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can become a Ko-fi member or a channel member to gain access to uncut videos and other perks, or you can leave me a tip by clicking the thanks under this video. Thanks to anyone who considers this. Daniel Fraga created his YouTube channel in January 2009, though didn't start uploading until just over a year later when he decided to speak about various issues in the city he lived, Sao Paulo, Brazil, that had clearly been bothering him for quite some time. His first few videos were short clips showing the state of the city, with rubbish and dumped furniture on the streets, potholes on the roads, abandoned land, overgrown trees and uncontrolled fires. Initially, he was simply complaining about these issues without blaming anyone in particular or proposing any specific solutions. However, he soon realised that highlighting the problems was pointless if he didn't actually try to do anything about it, and so he started naming names. In the titles of the videos, he started blaming specific people. First of all, the San Paulo mayor at the time, Gilberto Kassab, and then various other city officials. Daniel was hardly a celebrity on YouTube at the time. He currently has 196,000 subscribers, and most of those were gained in the years that followed. But even though his following was relatively small, they were certainly supportive, and his name became very well known in the area. Many of his subscribers were also getting sick of the state of the city and shared their own complaints and experiences in the comments. Over the next few months, he found more and more to complain about. At first, he seemed to believe the problems could be solved by electing the right politicians, but eventually his hope died, and he started considering more radical solutions. He began speaking about an ideology known as anarcho-capitalism, which, according to Wikipedia, seeks to abolish centralised states in favour of stateless societies, with systems of private property enforced by private agencies, the non-aggression principle, free markets and self-ownership. Basically, Daniel believed that the state shouldn't be able to tell people what to do, and that anyone should have the freedom to do whatever they want, providing they aren't encroaching on the rights of others. He believed that if people abided by the non-aggression principle, that there would be no need for a government to enforce laws, and that society would be fair, peaceful and prosperous. Anarcho-capitalism isn't a hugely popular theory in Brazil even today, but at the time Daniel first spoke about it, it was almost unheard of, so he could be seen as a pioneer of the movement. While he was gaining the support of more followers online, he was also making enemies elsewhere. He had already tried his best to destroy the reputations of city officials by highlighting the many problems in Sao Paulo, and now he was going even further and aiming higher, criticising the very existence of a government in general, he was trying to start a revolution. One criticism of Daniel's earliest proposition for an anarcho-capitalist revolution was the lack of an explanation for how society could function in this way while still relying on centralised banks. How could people truly be free when there's always a chance that for one reason or another their money could be confiscated at any time? Eventually, he found a solution for this. Bitcoin. Daniel proposed that if the economy could be separated from the state, then the state would collapse. If the government could no longer collect taxes, how would it enforce anything? With no money, it has no power. 
He believed that Bitcoin could free people from their dependence on a centralised bank, which has the potential for corruption. At the time Daniel started talking about this, one Bitcoin was worth around $10, and it sounds like he spent most of his savings on it. As he earned more money, he would buy more Bitcoin, and although the value dipped at times, overall it increased. One Bitcoin is now worth nearly $42,000. Daniel was already relatively well off, and his early investment in Bitcoin made him a very wealthy man, to say the least, and it would transpire that this wealth would be the difference in freedom and captivity for him. In August 2012, Daniel uploaded a video criticising Alexandra Blanca, a mayoral candidate in a nearby city who had convinced the Brazilian justice system to pressure Facebook into removing content he deemed as libel and slander, including memes that had been shared about him and his candidacy. This led to Alexandra filing a lawsuit against Daniel for defamation, seeking damages and for Daniel's YouTube video to be taken down. In response, Daniel shared as much information as he could about the case and encouraged his subscribers to download the video and share it elsewhere, while refusing to pay any damages and insisting he would never be silenced. The judge ruled that Daniel would be forbidden from publicly speaking about the situation further and decided to fine him roughly $1,300 every day from then until he agreed to delete the video. Of course, Daniel wasn't going to give up so easy, so he refused to delete the video, refused to pay the fines, and continued to encourage his followers to spread the word as much as possible. And his stubbornness paid off, as eventually the judge figured pursuing the ruling was more hassle than it was worth and decided to give up. Daniel delighted in bragging about the outcome of the case on his channel, but it wouldn't be long before he landed himself in hot water again. Sometime later, a politician filed a similar lawsuit against him, and this time he lost. But at this point, Daniel was basically existing in his own anarcho-capitalist bubble. He may not have reformed society into this utopia he envisioned, but in his mind, he was already living in it. He didn't really care if he was sued and lost, because he'd simply avoid the consequences, and he always had a trick up his sleeve. The courts managed to obtain access to his bank account in an attempt to take the money he had been ordered to pay, and to their surprise, all they found was $5. Having already invested a significant amount of money in Bitcoin and predicting what the court's next move would be, Daniel had decided to go all out and clear his bank account, leaving only $5 to ensure it remained open so the courts would waste time trying to access it and end up gaining nothing. Daniel continued to update his subscribers on everything that was happening, only revealing each move when it was too late for law enforcement to prevent it. He was determined to play chicken with the government, and somehow he kept getting away with it. Even when police showed up at his house to issue a subpoena, he simply refused to accept it. This was a few steps too far, though, and law enforcement decided that they needed to take serious action to bring Daniel, who had been named a threat to national security, to justice. But of course, once again, he was one step ahead of them. By the time the police came to arrest him, Daniel had vanished, never to be seen again. He had quit his job quite some time ago, left his rented home, and with all his money now invested in Bitcoin, there was no paper trail to indicate his whereabouts. No one knows exactly when he fled. The time between his refusal to accept the subpoena and his attempted arrest had already given him a head start, and he had likely been planning his inevitable disappearance for a long time. He could have already been thousands of miles away by the time the police showed up to arrest him, and it took until 2019, years after he vanished, for the government to cancel his passport and driving license. By this time, if his plan was to flee the country, he had undoubtedly already done so. Aside from a few comments here and there on cryptocurrency forums, and a couple of minor changes to his YouTube account, including a different channel banner, and the addition of a link to promote Bitcoin Cash in the channel description, Daniel has kept a low profile, leaving behind only speculation as to his whereabouts and his current activity. 
So what happened to him? Most people believe that Daniel fled the country shortly after the police arrived at his home to issue the subpoena. As I said, he likely knew his days were numbered and that it was only a matter of time until law enforcement made a move that he couldn't just simply ignore. So he probably planned what he would do in the event of his imminent arrest a long time before it actually happened. In the 2010s, running away and starting a new life was nowhere near as easy as it was a hundred years ago. But it's not impossible, especially if you have the amount of money that he did. No one knows the exact value of his Bitcoin investments, but many estimate it to be at least $100 million, so this guy is crazy rich. It's kind of funny how this entire story centres around him criticising the competence of the state, that's why he faced legal trouble in the first place, and at the same time, their incompetence facilitated his escape. The chances of me, or most people watching this video, being able to successfully disappear and start a new life while being wanted by the government are very slim, but Daniel had time to plan, money, and the state's incompetence on his side. The question is not, did he successfully escape in the first place, because we know for a fact he did, considering he made a couple of brief appearances online after his disappearance. The questions are, where did he go, and is he still out there somewhere now? Daniel's last upload on YouTube was over six years ago. His channel banner changed nearly four years ago, and he added the Bitcoin Cash link to his description in late 2021. As far as I'm aware, this was his latest online activity. I guess we don't even know for sure that Daniel actually made these changes, though I think it's unlikely that he would have shared his password with anyone, and if his account was hacked, you'd think a hacker would do more than just change the banner and description, so for the purpose of speculation, let's just assume that it was him. That means that until at least late 2021, he was alive, presumably well, and still hadn't been caught. Daniel is a relatively well-known individual in Brazil at this point, so it would be extremely risky for him to have remained in the country, knowing that someone could recognise him and turn him in. The safest bet would have been for him to move to a country that doesn't have an extradition treaty with Brazil. My research suggests that it may have been possible for him to gain citizenship in some other countries as a political refugee under certain circumstances. However, I'm not entirely clear on this, and I think it would be difficult considering his notoriety. So please correct me in the comments if you know more about this than me. There is some speculation that he may have moved to Singapore because he apparently said at one point that if he ever left Brazil, he would go to a country with more economic freedom, and Singapore ranks almost at the top of the list of countries with the most economic freedom. However, in his case, freedom from imprisonment is probably slightly more important than economic freedom, so we can't just assume he'd pick a country based on economic freedom alone. I do find it interesting that Daniel hasn't uploaded a video in over six years. His legal problems escalated to the point they did because he refused to be silenced, and yet now he's choosing to be silent. He could have put an end to this years ago and still had his freedom, yet he chose not to. And still, the outcome is the same in some ways, only now he has to spend the rest of his life on the run. Of course, he's likely mindful about revealing his location, but he could upload a video without giving anything away. Maybe he wanted his disappearance to remain a mystery. Right now, he's basically a legend, an enigma, the man who played chicken with the government and won. Though part of me thinks that he wouldn't be able to resist the urge to taunt the government even more. Daniel was fighting for a cause he believed in, but I also think he enjoyed the game. He was always ahead of law enforcement, that's probably why he didn't seem too bothered by all his legal problems, because he always knew he had a way out, one way or another. However, I also wonder if he'd still be content if he did get arrested. Sure, he'd prefer not to, and I certainly don't think he'd ever surrender himself, but in his mind, would there maybe be some gratification in his story coming to an end with him being a martyr? Would it have been better for him to go out with a bang or fade into obscurity? 
No one even knows for sure if Daniel is still alive now. Wherever in the world he is and whatever he's doing, he probably isn't living as Daniel Fraga anymore. So if he already died, or if he dies in the future, who knows if this will ever become public knowledge. I guess all we can do now is wait for more updates that may never come. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments, plus any suggestions you might have for a future video. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Huge thank you to my Kofi members and channel members whose names are on screen now. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week in a new video.